Hi everyone, we have Gina here. She's gonna be sharing her experience having a son in addiction and what things are like now. So can you share with us what your relationship was like with him before? Um, do you mean before coming yes. here? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we actually didn't have a relationship anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I had cut my son off probably for two years before that. Um, his addiction started at, I think, age 17, 18, and we went to several treatment facilities. And as you probably know, um, we were a couple, a husband and wife, mom and dad, that were also learning the process of all of it. So when we first took him to a treatment center, we thought 30 days is up, he's gonna be cured, we're done, and yay, this is awesome, we did it, high five, you know? Um, but it was nothing like that, nothing at all. So through the years, as we went in and out of treatment facilities and you know, tried all different types of them, I just assumed this was just gonna be another one. What was his work life like? And by that I mean, did he have trouble holding down a job? Was he going from job to job? He got actually really lucky, and I would say my son had, you know, not just luck, but God on his side, and sometimes I wished he would have gotten busted a few of the times that he didn't, but he really, if you ask him, you will find that he had so many times where he should have been in jail, he should have been arrested, he should have been dead, and he always seemed to just get through it. So he had an employer that absolutely loved him because when he was sober, he's an amazing person, an amazing you know, man, you know, now um, being sober, but even he would go in and out of being sober. So when he wasn't um, on drugs or whatever else, people loved him. So when he would slip back in, they wanted to give him chances over and over, so. What was your outlook on the future like? Um, for him, I knew that if he could get sober, there was there were no limits to what he could do. So he was, Aaron was a gifted child since kindergarten. I always knew if he could get sober without actually damaging his brain, um, that he the sky was the limit for him, and it still is, you know, to this day. But I, um, I honestly, there were a few years in there where I lost hope because I saw him in his addiction, and it didn't seem like he had any desire whatsoever to crawl out of it. So yeah, I did see a bright future for him, but only if he could stop doing drugs. So can you go into what the worry was like? and the you know, you know, feelings of maybe being a little hopeless. Okay, so in the very beginning, it was, it, was, um, it was anger. It started with anger because I saw his grades start to fall and I saw, I saw some of the things he did when he left to go to college that weren't you know, normal for him and I thought it was just normal college things, you know, partying, doing whatever. Um, but then when I really saw some of the changes when he came home, I made my husband go down to college and get him and bring him home because I said, this is not him, something's wrong, something's off, we need to do something about this. Um, and so yes, it was anger in the beginning and then it started to be worried because we started to realize, wait, this isn't just a, a kid partying and we need to bring him home for a semester. This is, there's more to this. But I will say that whenever the front door bell rang or the phone even rang, it, it you always worried that it was something, you know, some kind of phone call that you don't want to get. Is there any other forms of treatment or recovery you guys seeked for him? like a psychiatrist and things like that. He did have those things, but he was very good at manipulating them because he's very smart. There were a lot of things that we tried, but they weren't working because he always had the upper hand because he was so good at um, presenting himself like very professional and, you know, and, and he still is in a good way now, but, um, but at the time he could do that and just get away with whatever he wanted. Yeah, there were, there were times when the psychiatrist or psychologist would think that I was the most terrible mom. They would just look at me and I'd be like, you just don't know yet. You just don't know. But I, you know, I couldn't tell them how to do their job, but I was just like, you'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Have you experienced other addiction in your family? Yeah, and I think that's why it was probably the easiest, I mean, it was easy for me to see or figure out right away. Um, and not with just, it was, you know, growing up as a kid, we grew up in, I grew up in Santa Barbara, California. And I remember, you know, riding with my grandparents in the car and they would be pointing out the uncles or the cousins on the street corners that were bums, that were alcoholics. I have a cousin to this day that has never been off, um, I think he's on, been on heroin his entire life since a teenager and he's in his 60s now. And his parents have enabled him. And um, I, I don't know how he survived, but, um, 
it's been there for a really long time. And even with his, you know, his dad and I have had gone through a period where we were drinking way too much and probably about 10 years of that. And I think that probably had a huge effect on him as a kid. So what, what was Aaron like in early recovery? First few months? Uh, it was always the same. Every single time it was the same. Even coming here was the same. He was just, you know, himself again. And he was just excited about it. And he was gonna do it this time. And he, but each time, each time he went through it, we would start to realize that he's, he's schmoozing us again, you know? And it was just so that he could get back out there and start the process all over again. When would you say you started gaining hope? I, I think probably when he was here. This was the first time when I really thought that this could be different. I mean, each time we said, oh, maybe this is different, you know, but the difference here was, I feel like the people actually really care. And I've not never gotten to know any of those people that he would talk about because I always kept myself separate from all of it because I never know what's gonna happen. Yeah. But he did talk about, and my husband talked about, so my husband stayed connected. And I would ask him things, you know, once in a while, but I didn't personally stay connected. But he said, this place is different. They really care about him. And there's an aftercare program where they actually, you know, they're going to meetings and, and they're held accountable and the people in the house are accountable. It's not just some big free for all, like a lot of places. Um, and I felt like he actually felt cared about or cared for and he wasn't just trying to you know get through this one like he cared about about the people around him too so it was it was different than all the other places in that way so what happened as Aaron acquired more and more sober time one of the things that I really saw him doing was sticking to the 10 steps is it 10 12 12 12, mm -hmm. 12 steps 12 steps the first time he did amends um, was probably our breakthrough he and I because I hadn't really allowed anything until then and then he asked and I was you know willing to do it but somebody from here actually called me over Christmas and asked if I would come in and I said no I said you're a new another new one here's a, here we go again and he's like okay all right have a nice Christmas Miss Porter you know like like I was the mean mother but I was just like okay we'll see you know um, but I actually said no to that because it would have been maybe the tenth one that I said yes to you know and so um, and, and Aaron was really sad. It was around Christmas time and he was sad that I wouldn't come in, but I felt like I needed to do it to make him work for it, to make him work for something because I was actually glad when my husband said he's very sad. And I said, good, he should be sad. I don't want to do this anymore. You know, he should be sad. What are Aaron's general relationships like now? Well, let me start by telling you what they were before. So Aaron, I think part of his issue with drugs and everything was that he was a little introverted and I didn't realize that he actually needed help being a little more extroverted. We're a house of extroverts, pretty much. And as a child, he was that way. Um, loud sisters and you know, mom who's you know not afraid of you know talking to people. And I didn't know he felt that way. I just thought it was him with his little smart brain, you know, always wanting to be in a book. But a lot of smart kids hide in books, and they don't quite get how to interact with other people. So I didn't quite you know, that would have been something I could have helped him with when he was younger. So he didn't have a lot of those kind of friendships and relationships. And I think that's one of the reasons he turned to drugs, but he's completely come out of his shell. He's really, really good with other people. He has relationships with every single person in our family um, and then some and friends, you know, and, um, and people that want him to mentor them now. And, um, I, I really do, I love that because I didn't know that he was gonna gain that, you know, be able to be social without feeling awkward. So what would you say your guys' relationship is like now? We have a great relationship. We have an awesome relationship now. Yeah, de definitely mother and son. And I think I was slower to um, allow that to happen. Um, but we now have been, you know, like even just in the last six months have been sort of off and on, you know, the phone more often. And it, it's, I'm the one who slowed it down because it's, I just had my guard up, you know, I just, and um, I don't necessarily feel that anymore. Like I don't feel like I have my guard up. He did have one relapse while he was here. Um, but one of the things that I realized with that was actually a good thing they had that relapse because again, when that happened, I knew that he had some things that he really cared about in his life. And so when he came here and was able to experience some of those things and then relapsed, he realized he was going to lose some of those things. And I saw him realize that he was going to lose them. And I saw him 
do a really quick switch because he didn't want to lose him and just that he didn't want to lose him was a really big step for him. Um, how much how much sober time does Aaron have now? Aaron is just over two years sober. So what does Aaron do for work now? Um, Aaron is a computer engineer and he has always had that brain. He is going to school also. He works for a sports company in the Valley. Um, and he learned a lot of that from his dad who has the same type of job. So what is, what does the worry look like now? I have zero, like none. I don't, I have complete peace of mind and I just, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's great. I, and I see a really bright future for him and like I was saying earlier, kind of anything that he wants to do, I think he can. Would you recommend VRC? Um, absolutely. I really would because it really did make the difference and I didn't see this type of caring or this type of, you know, genuine, you know, wanting someone to stay sober and also the um, relationships, the friendships that that are allowed to be formed, you know, here with each other and really wanting to root each other on in sobriety. Um, I did not see that at any other place. And so I absolutely would recommend, and I have, <laughs> I have. <laughs>